everybody to please take a seat. We would like to get this ceremony started, please. Thank you. Chief. I officially open the Board of Selectmen's meeting. It is 6.01 on, on September 6, 2016. If we could all please stand and pledge our flag. ceremony that will take uh, place in a few minutes. Following the ceremony, we will recess down here and reconvene upstairs to continue with the agenda. And at that time, I will review the agenda uh, upstairs. So we are here this evening to honor a true hero, a true police officer here in town who has worked his way up um, through the ranks to the position that he will be honored this evening. These are the times that we thoroughly enjoy what we do. And we're pleased that we, we had a part of it and we're truly honored to be part of tonight's ceremonies. We're here to honor and promote Lieutenant Rivard. So with that said, I will turn it over to Chief Bradley for some comments to continue with the ceremony. Thank you. Good evening, town officials. Representative Meridian, department members, citizens, family, and friends, thank you for attending this evening's promotional ceremony. Tonight I have the pleasure of promoting Sergeant Bruce Rivard to the position of lieutenant, a position that's been vacant in the department for many years. In this budget cycle, with the support of the town manager and the board of selectmen, I have changed the rank structure of the department from a chief and three sergeants to a police chief, lieutenant, and two sergeants. This change will create a clearer chain of command within the department and will open a career path for future officers who, whom aspire to be executive officers within the department. Bruce Rivard has been an employee of the Upton Police Department since 1984. First as a reserve officer from 1984 until 1990 when he was appointed as a full-time officer. For the past 16 years, he served in the role of police sergeant and our investigation supervisor where he worked diligently to successfully clear hundreds of cases. During this time, Sergeant Rivard has also been responsible for planning and coordinating police operations for special events. If you've had the opportunity to work with Sergeant Rivard, you know he understands and embraces our mission to provide quality police services in partnership with the community we serve. It's also important to recognize that the success of any individual in our department is a product of teamwork and dedication of members of our team who are seated here tonight. And I thank them, uh, all of our officers, for the continued su support and hard work. I'm confident Bruce Rod will be successful in his new position as police lieutenant and will continue to provide leadership to the Upland Police Department. At this time, I would ask that Sergeant Rivard and his family please step forward. I think it's important to recognize his family as well.
safety personnel, our law enforcement, uh, might not get the best rep, but in my district, we have some of the best. We truly do. Um, I'm very proud to support each and every one of you and all that you do to keep our wonderful community safe. And uh, that truly extends to the lieutenant now, as I've had the pleasure of knowing him both professionally and personally. And I just, I have to say, Chief, you made an excellent choice. This is, uh, there's no one more deserving than, uh, than Lieutenant Brevard. And with that, I'd like the Lieutenant to please come up and join me as I have an official citation for you from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. It reads, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Bruce Rivard in recognition of your promotion from the rank of sergeant to lieutenant. The, ex the entire membership extends its very best wishes for you in the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given today, the 6th of September, 2016, signed by Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo, and your favorite state representative, David Moravian. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Other 
brothers and sisters who put their lives on the line every day. And all we can do is wish them well and wish them safe duty. So with that said, I hereby recess the ceremony and we will reconvene upstairs. Thank you. It is 6.20. I will reconvene the Board of Selectments meeting on September 6, 2016. For the record, we opened the uh, meeting in the main hall downstairs and had a very wonderful um, pinning ceremony for Lieutenant Bruce Rivard on the Upton Police Department. We recessed downstairs and we subsequently reconvened upstairs here. I will review the agenda. We have regular and executive session meeting minutes to uh, approve. With respect to invited guests, we've already addressed 3.1 with respect to Lieutenant Revive Penny Ceremony. 3.2, we have Representative David Meridian with us to uh, have discussions with us. Uh, invited guest 3.3, we have Ken Glowacki to discuss uh, 3 Milford Street parking uh, under recognition. Okay. Um, we have the manager's report. Under discussion items, we will have, we will continue discussions with respect to uh, proposed vehicle use policy. We will uh, continue discussions with respect to an agreement with Grafton for an inter interconnect agreement. We will review a draft list of special town meeting articles, and we will be passing over uh, discussion item 6.4, follow up to employee con uh, correspondence um, due to circumstances that have arisen uh, this afternoon. So we will um, end the general session meeting and go into executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Exception Number 3 to discuss strategies with respect to litigations. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position, on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Have I missed anything, gentlemen? No. Nothing. Okay. okay, so we have meeting minutes to address. Gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, I motion we accept the meeting minutes as written of August 23rd, 2016. Second motion. Be sure that as unanimous action of the board. Mr. Chairman, I motion that we accept the executive session minutes of August 23rd, 2016 as written. Second. Please show that as unanimous action of the board. Thank you. Okay, invited guest 3.2, Representative David Meridian, please step forward. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good Thank evening. Thank you for your involvement downstairs. That was, again, it was very nice. Well, that was a very, very fitting tribute. And as is becoming a custom, uh, Upton does it right. You know, you have someone who is quite deserving, and it just, again, reiterates to me how proud I am to represent this town. It was a great, great tribute. Thank you. Um, you did mention articles for the special town meeting. Might you have a date for that yet? I just want to make sure I can put it on my schedule to be there if I can. The date is November 15th, 2016. All right. I will not ask for a birthday cake, but it is the 21st, just letting you know. Um, I, in hearing the agenda, I will make this brief because the uh, remarks from Beacon Hill uh, have slowed down because of the fact that at the end of July, we break out a full formal session. However, before we broke out a full formal session, I do have a bit of good news, which I have relayed on to the town manager. I would imagine she's obviously shared that with you, but if we look back, on the house budget, uh, we were not able to secure any additional funding for Upton we had put in for $28,000. However, on the Senate side, my good friend and colleague Senator Moore was able to secure $27,000 for Upton. We fought for it and we kept it in the conference committee. So uh, while it's a small number, it's certainly a welcome number, but we didn't have it before. So it's an additional $27,000 for public safety upgrades. Uh, which would certainly benefit the community. Um, as 
I've told all of my towns I would just caution spending that money right now because we're still looking at the revenue stream and the benchmarks coming in. I think they're going to be releasing the numbers um, this week for the most recent account. It looks like they might be about 15 million under 15 million under benchmark. Um, not a huge number when you look at it, but still the returns from capital gains is really where the discrepancy in the number comes from. Uh, aside from that, we're now in uh, the informal part of session where we have to meet constitutionally every 72 hours. Um, there, it's not to say that a bill cannot proceed, um, but it kind of comes up against a little bit more of a deadline at the end of the year now and in an informal session, any one member can object and stop any bills from moving. So that's why there was such a big rush to, uh, to get done major pieces of legislation by the end of July where all members could take a roll call on them. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions as we move forward. I just wanted to bring to your attention and obviously to the public here and both watching at home, the benefit of receiving the 27,000 that we can hopefully get allocated out through that earmark to the town. Great. Great. I'll open it up to fellow board members. Um, first of all, thank you. Uh, you've been diligent, and every time we've sought funds, you've been diligent in working with us for that. Uh, we have a couple of things down the road that we'll be coming to visit you on. Again, clearly knowing the state of the, the financial state of the Commonwealth as it sits now, obviously our primary concerns are the local aid and the Chapter 90 funds. Chapter 90 funds are really the step that allows us to go beyond what we can raise through taxation. So that's an important one. I know I'm telling you something you already know. We've discussed this, but uh, yeah, so. Well, happy to have the conversation whenever the town needs come up. Okay. I'm all set. I don't have any questions for you. You've always been there. Anytime I had a question, he uh, answers the phone, returns the phone call. So. Thank you. And again, I, again, sir, I thank you for your uh, candor, your open-mindedness, and your openness to come and meet with us on a regular basis. Uh, I, I thank you and applaud you for your continued efforts. Uh, on behalf of the towns that you represent. You are a very uh, you know, hard worker with respect to that. Again, just to echo what Select and Fleming has said, Chapter 90 money, again, is, is extremely important to us. We rely heavily on that for road repairs. I do know that we have reached out to you as well as Senator Moore, and we're reaching out uh, on, the, on the federal level also with respect to us. any assistance we can get with, with respect to bridge repair, mm -hmm. with, with, with respect to the Fisk Middle Bridge. And there's been correspondence going back and forth that, you know, the monies, we could try to put money into certain pools of money to try to help with those repairs. But anything else that, that you can do to help us, because that bridge, even though we're partnering with Milford to do the necessary repairs to that bridge, is, has the potential of being, uh, I'll use the word hardship with respect to the town's budget um, with the necessary repairs needed for that. So we are reaching out both on a state and on a federal level for any assistance that, that we can see on that. But again, thank you very much for all your efforts and thank you very much for your candor and communication. So, Madam Town Manager, any comments? Um, no, I'm all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. So, thank you very much. Love them. Love them. Okay, 3.3, .3, Mr. Glowacki, please. Hello, good evening, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, I've asked for this time to uh, bring you up to date on some of the things that have happened. I'm speaking unofficially, this is not in my official capacity, but as a citizen of uh, the town. And uh, it has to do with my real estate dealings with, in particular, uh, 3 Milford Street, the church. Uh, give you a status and an update, and also looking for your opinion. Um, right now, I hold the exclusive option to uh, purchase that property. And so I've been looking at marketing it, and uh, as a, uh, not as residential, but as commercial. And of course, one of the most important things about commercial is, is parking. And um, um, about a week and a half ago, I met before the planning board and I asked them to consider it. I know that this is unofficial, 
This is prelim preliminary. I don't expect any answers. This is just me and you having a conversation about it for the first time. Um, but the planning board seemed to be, if I can characterize it, in very positive uh, fashion because I, I pointed out that here we have a building that's historic. It's in the center of the town. We have, we're considering village concept right now. And um, as far as its commercial usage, if it doesn't get municipal parking or if there isn't some kind of municipal parking that's available to it, it becomes really a worthless piece of real estate. And I have no skin in this game because I can walk away from this right now. Right now. So it's more of informing you and also asking if you have some opinion about that whole thing. And I'll give you an example. If there was a restaurant to be put in there, one of the requirements is that for every three patrons you have to have a, a parking spot. Well, we know that that's impossible given that the property and the situation of the property right now. So, but I'm still looking to see if I can market it that way. I can't make any promises to anybody, but I'm looking into it. Uh, I also have, have talked to the, uh, the, the building, uh, Library Building Commission, or committee? Feasibility. Feasibility, yeah, study. feasibility yeah. committee. I've always spoke, spoke to them, and I've asked them for a formal session. Um, I talked to them informally. I'm, I'm, I've already asked and made a formal request to meet with them and at least make a pitch and see if they're interested in it in a formal way. I don't think they've ever had that done before. I know that they've, they said that they considered it, but I don't think it was done in a formal thing. So that's where I am right now. The uh, planning board basically, I asked them what the next step was and they said I should really sit down and talk to, to you. and. Uh, give you an update and so that's where it is and uh, really what it's ultimately going to be if it's going to be commercial the request would be to allow yeah, municipal parking and that's really it I don't know what your feelings are about that and if you have some I'd like to know them if not it's okay too <laughs> okay yeah. well, seeing this is really still in the planning stages it's kind of hard to even figure out if it'd be a restaurant or a store or something, right? Yeah, this is, this is like I said, this is our first conversation. I understand that. Uh, so it's kind of hard to even figure out how many spots you would need. Yeah, and I know that there would ultimately have to be a formal plan that would be presented to you. But, you know, I had to open the door at some point. And I'm thinking restaurants they, are more in the evening, so it might not interfere with us. But we do have a lot of town meetings and stuff in the evening hours, too. Yeah, yeah. Nothing really right now. Okay. So, um, I guess restaurant seems like it's the majority or the consensus at this point. Um, do you have any indication of the number of patrons or the, the amount of spaces? Um, at present, it's used, I'm thinking of obviously the playground, but there's the evenings in the spring and the summer when they have recreational activities for the youth. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you remember, years ago, the church, people that attended that church used to park there. Um, are uh, you asking for a, an agreement with the town, a formal agreement to qualify for the space as for parking? In other words, I, I think three, ultim ultim yes, ultimately. So you would be saying to us, I need 20 spaces. I need 15 spaces that the town would authorize me to use. Is that what the? It's going to be something like that. I think, you know, this is new to me as well, so I'm not sure about all the steps. But with the requirement right now in the zoning board, it's for every three patrons, you know, the one parking spot. So basically, I'd be asking to, to waive that. Now, I did, we did some preliminary sketches of how many seats could go in there from a potential. I'm not a restaurateur. I have no intentions to be a restaurateur. But, you know, I collect the rent other if I could do it. Other than visiting. <laughs> and visiting you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll visit and pay, be a patron. But um, it could be up as many as 200 people on just one floor just to give you some rough idea. That all depends on a, on a formal design, of course, and this is just me messing around with an architect. Uh, but it, that would probably the, be the maximum. It could be, you know, it could be 50 or 60 as well. But that's the kind of numbers that I've, we've looked at. As you know, I've been involved with the library feasibility, and no, not, although not a formal member at this point, um, which I was, uh, I still attend all the meetings. You were there at the last one right. when we were there. Um, and I think out of courtesy to them, I'd like to get some input, although they're miles away from their proposed plan too. Um, that is the only spot that we have an up in that has 
municipal parking, so to speak, or available land. So we'd have to be very considerate of that as we go forward. But yes. I, my opinion is it's real early in the game to even make a comment as to what the intent is until there's more knowledge as to what. I yeah. mean, if you're talking 200 parking spaces, 200 residents, that means you're going to need over 60 parking spots, and that raises the number considerably. So, Right, and I understand yeah, that. Question. Yeah, I have to, I'm really, I guess what I'm, I don't want to hear a, a negatives. And so, you know, as long as that the, the board is open to um, consideration, and I know that this is not a formal vote, but that it would be considered, then it gives me one more, you know, step to go. Mr. Chairman, my comment would be it'd be too early to even give a negative. Yeah. I mean, it's, sure. it's so, yeah. conceptually, the idea is being laid out, but there are no numbers This, you know. Yes, I understand. You get closer, if you could come in with more concrete information, then it'd be easier. Um, okay. Again, my concern would be, and candidly, if it's 65 spaces and that holds 85, that means on a given night you could basically take over the whole parking lot if there were a major function or something. And that would be a concern. I understand. Based that. upon the other residents' use, yeah. playground and recreation, so forth. Yes, I understand that. And again, I, I, I thank you for coming forward, and I thank you for your open mindedness with respect to trying to do something you know, with that building. That building um, just personally does mean a lot to me, and I'd like to see something uh, occur you know, with that building. When we had the library feasibility uh, committee in front of us, uh, I think it was either the last meeting or the meeting before. There was a good conversation at that time with respect to the parking lot. And I think I had said that, you know, if, if that was our only downtown parking, I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm overprotected or very protective with respect to that, to that, to that land. Because I'm, I'm, you know, concerned with, you know, what hypothetically we would lose uh, by either committing to the library or committing to a proposed project there. I absolutely would be open and, and uh, to hear um, thoughts as far as, as, as you get, as individuals get further into the design, but um, you know, it is public parking now, so you know, individuals can park there, but to, um, you know, to commit it, you know, to a, to a, to a certain business or an establishment, you know, I, I, I would not be negative against it, but I would have to he truly hear more information and more facts uh, with respect to the plan before I would, I would truly say one way or another. But again, I thank you for the dialogue. You know, thank you for, for coming in front of us with you know, an idea you know, for, the, for, for the center of town. And um, you know, I think that this is something that we would truly take under advisement, but again, um, I think it, to, to my other uh, board members, I think it's still too early uh, in the process. But again, like you said, this is just to start the dialogue, start people thinking, and start the dialogue flow. That, that's correct. Thank which you. It, which is yeah. which is what was done, and I thank you for that. And I'm not even sure that it's going to end up as a, as a restaurant because I'm I'm really looking and, and just saying there's 8,000 square feet that's available in this town, the center of the town, and. It would be a shame to just see it empty for more years and not being made use of. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 4.0, under recognition. Uh, Mr. Jim? Yes. Yes, I, it's with regret that I would like to recognize the passing of Bob Coffin. I don't know how many people sitting here tonight know of him. I know some do. Um, when I first moved to Upton in 1972, Bob was the one that was plowing all the driveways in my neighborhood with his old truck with a big cement block on the back. Um, very social, happy, smiling guy. Um, it was, seems like it was only a few months ago I stopped and talked to him. He was out in front of his house. So um, our sympathies to his family. Bob was a part-time police officer in town for many years. And aside from that, he was just generally a good guy that was there for a lot of people and was willing to help out. So um, to the family, sympathies on behalf of the town. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman Fleming. No, sir. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, on the manager's report, Madam Town Manager. 
few things to report on. Um, I'm sure you all noticed as you came uh, into the building that the building at Two Grove Street has been removed. It was removed last Thursday and Friday. And uh, our next step on that project is to finish up with conservation uh, approval in the coming weeks and also uh, planning board meets next week on the 13th to review the, the site plan since there are more than 10 spaces. Uh, we're working on um, a cost estimate as soon as we have that in hand we'll be back to you to finalize the budget for the project and uh, the goal is try and get that done this fall. Um, so that's moving forward. Um, uh, on 60 School Street. Uh, if you've been by there, you'll notice that building has been boarded up. We had a company come last week and took care of that. Um, and at this point, uh, we're not planning to take any more action on the property. Um, the Board of Health has been in touch with the Attorney General's office about taking over the next steps with that process, with that project, and uh, we'd like to see that happen. So we'll keep you apprised of that. Um, our recreation director um, resigned last week, so uh, the Recreation Commission will be uh, working with our office to start the process to fill that position. I think they'll be having some conversations about how to best structure that position going forward. Um, I don't know if that will have any budget impact, but we'll keep you apprised of that. Um, we. Uh, the, the planning board uh, came up a little bit when Mr. Glowacki was here. The planning board is planning to have their um, public forum on the Village Center zoning bylaw. That will be um, Tuesday, this September 27th um, at the Nittenbach High School Auditorium. Uh, we're working on a letter to go out to every property owner in the districts uh, and some frequently asked questions, a map, to give them a heads up about it because we'd really like their input into what they think about it um, and the planning board wants to hear that so they can decide whether we're ready to move forward to a special town meeting this fall or not. So um, we probably won't put the whole bylaw in an envelope. I'm not sure it would fit, mm -hmm. um, but we'll certainly have it up on the website and give people copies if they come into town hall, whatever is easiest for folks. Um, and of course, every resident is invited to come to a meeting such as that because a, a zoning bylaw change is always an important topic in a community. Um, with that, if I just start right there with sure. my fellow board members, would you uh, be able to attend that night? I wrote it down, I'll have to check. Which was then? September, September 27th. 27th, okay. If we could just check and Second. see. It would be great if you can. 27th, if we can, and that way we'll, that way we'll post it. So just let, hmm? Seventh, it's, a, Seventh. it's the okay. fourth Seventh. Tuesday of the month. Yeah, okay. yeah, thanks. It's their regular meeting night, so they'll meet over there. So if you can get back to the town manager, please, if you can attend and if, if uh, a couple of us will attend, then we will post accordingly. There are, um, based on the, the joint meeting of the three boards that we had uh, last week or the week before, it all mm -hmm. runs together, um, there are a couple more tweaks that we'll be making to the document. The planning board will be discussing those next week on the 13th, and at that point we think we'll have a good document that they're happy with uh, to go forward. So we're going to go forward and see how that goes. Um, I want to make sure that you noted in the, um, my report that we are changing our requirements for snow plowing this year um, based on some feedback from our insurer and um, a survey we've done of other towns. We find that we have not been requiring insurance typical of, of, of contractors when they do this sort of work and um, our procedures could use some, some brushing up. So we have put that together. Public Works will be meeting with our, uh, all of our contractors because we want to continue to work with all of them that we've had and find a pathway to make sure that they can get in compliance at, at no hardship to them. Um, so I think we're in a win-win situation and uh, the town will be better protected, so will we. I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, the gate is in at Heritage Park. Uh, we'll get it painted so it looks a little better than the uh, glaring galvanized whatever it is that's there now uh, that's into landscape, but it is finally installed. So that's my quick update. Very good. Thank you. Questions? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, under discussion item 6.1, uh, discuss the proposed vehicle use policy. Uh, I believe it was at the last meeting. The town manager gave us a 10 to 12 page uh, draft um, bylaw of a uh, administrative policy with respect to uh, vehicle use policy. 
to be very candid, and I will open up to the board members, I have not fully reviewed this um, totally yet. So, I mean, if it is recommended to, again, um, defer this to another meeting, I would have, take no objections to that. So, let's kind of proceed. So, with that said, I'll turn it over to Select and Doherty. Uh, I'll agree with you. I found a couple of things that um, I would like to either either send an email to uh, Mrs. Robinson that she can talk to you guys about, just like a little housekeeping things. Yeah. Okay. I've already submitted them to her and she's got them in the system, so mm -hmm. it's not in this copy on our yeah. agenda, right. but a couple of changes I thought were necessary and we both concur, mm -hmm. we're in agreement that it does make sense. So, okay. so if you could send those, you, you know, yep. send them to the email, then we'll get okay. that done and I will, and I will, prior to the next meeting, I'll do the same. So, thank you. Okay, under 6.2, uh, motion to execute emergency interconnection agreement with Graf, and this was discussion at the last meeting uh, with respect to an interconnect, uh, emergency interconnect agreement that we have with Graf and currently located up on William Street uh, at the Graf and Upton line. We have that. Uh, uh, interconnection there for emergency purposes that will feed as many up and individuals as it can if we ever have a problem with our um, current up and water source. Uh, it is my understanding in speaking with the town manager that in past years this has been kind of like a, a handshake agreement for lack of a better word which again we don't have uh, issues with handshake agreements as long as players don't change too much. Um, but again, we think it's somewhat important to at least have an agreement or, you know, a letter of understanding with Grafton uh, with respect to this. The town manager had mentioned at the last meeting that there was some possible anxieties with respect to signing an agreement. Um, and hopefully those anxieties have gone away because we have a, an agreement in front of us. So with that, I will turn it over to the town manager. Uh, the, the concerns that they had were with some of the language that refers to contracts between communities. It's in state law. Um, they also were hesitant to um, have multiple references to the word reasonable in terms of being able to provide water. Um, but having said that, they said if you, uh, we, in situations like this, whether it's DPW, police, fire, communities, you know, find a way to help each other and they're, they're intent was always to do that um, but they want to make sure that if we call saying we need water that they are the only ones who, who turn the valve on to provide it um, and that um, they have a reasonable amount of time to do it and I said well since we're the one asking you uh, if it takes you an extra hour to get there that's what's going to take and we appreciate that so we work through those details um, we're both comfortable with this final version um, it has been reviewed by council so um, I'm recommending that you uh, execute it and then the Grafton Water District would plan to do so at their next meeting next Tuesday. Okay. Second <coughs> in comments. No, you, as we discussed this last meeting, I'm in agreement with this. I think it's a great benefit for the town. So as long as uh, Grafton's happy with it, I'm good. The only comment I'd make uh, on line three where it says in the, in the absence of the DPW director, the administrative assistant, should that not read town manager or fire chief? Shall have the authority to determine the existence of emergency? Number three. It could. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the other thing is what is the, what would our projected cost be for the meter to install the meter? Between page? five and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Something we can afford out of our operating budget and seem like a reasonable thing to do to make sure that whatever water they provide to us we know exactly how much it is so we're paying for exactly that not a not an estimate it's nice to know we could have a backup of 400,000 gallons so it makes sense to me on some days that's all the water that we need no I know yeah so that's this works for me redundancy is key partnerships are key um, critical utilities and use is key and I think this 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 meets the criteria of all um, I thank the town of Grafton and the town manager for coming to consensus uh, on this agreement and look forward to executing it this evening. Do we have to uh, postpone or change it? 
I can change it downstairs. We can make oh, a friendly okay. amendment. We can make a friendly amendment. Let me just call him in the morning and make sure he's comfortable with that. Why don't we wait to sign it until... Do you want a motion? Yeah, we'll take the same motion. Continue. Mr. Chairman, I would motion that the Board of Selectmen authorize the contractual entering of agreement for the purchase and sale of water with the Town of Grafton subject to the amendment so stated this evening. The second the motion. Please show us unanimous action of the Board. And again, thank you to the Town of Grafton and all parties who worked hard on that. So thank you. Okay, under 6.3, review a, a draft list uh, of special town meeting warrant articles. Uh, as part of our package, as everybody I um, hope is aware, on November 15, 2016, we have our um, usual uh, fall special town meeting to address items that were either um, deferred or held from the annual town meeting to the fall town meeting. So in front of us, our uh, uh, currently, as I read them, 16 articles. Yes. Um, to, uh, that, that's, that's currently on the draft to be uh, looked at. The, um, the date that we chose to close the warrant it was, was when? September 30th. September 30th, okay. We put an item on the website last week to inform citizens if, of the warrant um, in case they wanted to bring anything forward. Okay. Um, before I turn it over to uh, the town manager, I'll turn it over to my fellow board members just to see if there's any questions or concerns that they have with initially that they would like for the discussion on. I mean, again, this will be um, an item that will we will make sure we'll be on the next agenda also, because that will be our last meeting uh, before the warrant closes. So um, I think this is just primarily to give us a, a you know a, a heads up as far as what's been proposed and what's been looked at. So, Gary, any comments? No, my biggest worry would be the zoning bylaw change. I just want to make sure we're not rushing it and that um, the townspeople have enough time to weigh in. Sure. Usually, you know, we do it in the fall. I mean, the, in May, but. The uh, planning board thinks it's a good time. I guess we'll just support it. I think the public forum, I yeah. think, in, in September will be a good, ju good right. like, judge of that. You know, how we proceed. So yeah, well, that's my yeah. Bob, any comments? No. Um, the only thing I would suggest is possibly moving line item four up to the beginning. Uh, that's a primary one. Uh, noticing many of these are the ones that we deferred at the along with my friends from the finance committee. Uh, we agreed to defer some of these, and um, I think the most important to the citizens is the offset the tax rate to stabilize the tax rate to keep it uh, at the level it was last year. And that, that commitment we made, I just want to make sure we hold true to it. So there'd be no increase in taxation. Madam Town Manager. Um, I, I, I concur with you. The only reason I put it forth was I wasn't sure uh, from a uh, legal perspective where it should fall in oh. terms of other things we need to, other housekeeping we need to right. do. Um, but I, if there's no reason, then certainly it could go first. Um, I did add one item in thinking about this a little bit more since we posted the uh, warrant, which is uh, Fisk Mill Bridge. Um, we would be ready to move on that. We still are exploring grant you know, opportunities. Um, I did confer with the town clerk. Um, you know, we haven't given any thought to exactly how it would be funded. Um, if it was something like a debt exclusion, I think we might want to wait till the spring because I'm not sure we want to have an election after that in the winter. Um, so something to just think about a little bit more. Um. Okay. So uh, yeah, this will be on our next agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, again, if, as, as always, if you in looking at it, if you have any issues or concerns or questions, I, I would ask you to reach out to the town manager individually and she'll be more than happy to uh, address your concerns and disperse communications as, as needed. So again, thank you very much for that. Um, as I stated at the very beginning under 6.4, follow up to employee correspondences, that will be passed over uh, this evening due to circumstances that uh, have arisen uh, just this afternoon. So we'll pass over item 6.4. With respect to meeting look ahead topics, have I, do you know, other than the, the, the annual town meeting, I mean, the special town meeting and others, do we, anything that we would like to put on? No. Okay. 
Okay, um, before we go into executive session at this time, I will open it up to- Does the senator want to say something? Pardon? Mr. Moore, senator. Oh, if, if, if I could just, before I open it up to the public, I would uh, ask <laughs> Senator Moore, and my apologies, Senator, for, uh, uh, for, for, for um, missing you downstairs earlier. I should have spoken slower, I guess. My apologies. Now is actually my fault for being 15 minutes late, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, but uh, thank you for allowing me just to come up and speak. And again, I want to congratulate um, Lieutenant Ravad on all his excellent work and uh, the promotion tonight. Um, and I think Representative Meridian uh, talked about the, tw the 27,000 mm -hmm. so, um, that we were able to get in the budget. Um, the, other, the other reason I wanted to come up was just that on the way here today, um, I did get a report from DOR that the state revenue collections for the month of for the month of uh, August are currently four, 42 million dollars below the state revenue estimates. Even though we brought in uh, 521 million dollars, which is a 2.3 uh, percent increase over last year, um, we still fell short by 42 million dollars. So no need to panic yet, but I just wanted to keep you apprised of uh, the budget news as it's coming out. So. That's disappointing. Yes. But hopefully we'll have a, maybe we'll have a self-correct, you know, in the next month to come. Yeah, in the, according to information DOR is putting out that the, um, the revenue indicators are lag a month behind. So this is really more of an indicator of what July's act, economic activity was. So hopefully August, when we get the September report, August is, will be a little better. But um, so that's where we stand and hopefully uh, it will continue to get better. We'd hate to see nine seat cuts after it come down, yeah. but so. Okay, questions, comments? Nothing, Senator. No, pretty, pretty Again, like, I, like we mentioned to, uh, I don't know if you were in the room, my apologies, Senator, I don't know. if you were in the room, but when I mentioned to the rep representative with respect to um, the Fisno Bridge, I know you, uh, you, you attempted to put uh, funds forward yeah. uh, to assist us with that, and uh, they subsequently got turned down. And again, we thank you very much for, for those efforts, as well as the efforts with respect to the life safety items that you, you and Representative Lane continue to push and provide to this town. Um, I would just still continue to ask any any opportunities you see for funding with respect to Chapter 90 improvements or the bridge would be yep. greatly appreciated for our, for our town. Yep. I will, um, we'll definitely continue to look for opportunities to try to, yep. to try to advocate for that and see if we can get that in. I was actually a little disappointed that they weren't willing to entertain that where it was so close to the uh, parameters that is set out in the small bridge program. Mm -hmm. I thought we had a shot at it, um, but we will continue to try. And please, um, town minutes was been great, but letting us know what's been going on in town and what um, what we can try to provide for you. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Senator, very much. Thank you, sir. Bye. Oh. See you. Say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you. Long. Nice to see you. Okay, before we enter into executive session, is there anybody else that would like to hear? Yes, if you please come up and state your name. Good evening, my name is Pamela Goodwin. I live at Coach Road Apartments at mm -hmm. Fort Hartford Avenue. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, I want to thank Bob. He met with me individually. We had um, a lot of clarification going on. It was very helpful. Um, and I think that someone's working on the slat of the bench, because I saw it there and I told Rachel it's gone today, but I know that somebody's going to work on getting that bench appropriate to sit on. So I thank you for that. Um, there's a couple of things coming down the pike that I think um, people should become aware of. Um, one is, uh, and maybe you already know, that Governor Baker signed a resolve called S-1984 um, on August 10th. It was put into effect, um, um, Senator Meridian, um, Representative Meridian and Senator Moore would know about this as well. Some of us have worked really hard um, to get S-1984 passed, and it's a creating a commission to look into bullying, and inappropriate behavior in elderly communities. Um, and so um, I can have a copy made of this article if you'd like to, but the Senate passed it a long time ago. It's been stuck in the Ways and Means Committee for quite some time, 
at the midnight hour, the representatives passed it, and people will be looking into that across the Commonwealth. It's actually a nationwide problem as well. Um, one of my partners is Jerry Halberstadt, and he's a co-founder of that organization that helped set that up. Secondly, um, we have five board members, and if I'm not mistaken, the one that's going to term is going to expire this coming year will be Judith McGee, and she's governor appointed. So I'm assuming the governor Baker would continue with that unless something else is going on. I'm not aware of how that whole thing works. I'd have to make more phone calls on that. However, um, Department of Housing and Community Development has implemented a whole lot of changes. Apparently, a lot of the changes were implemented or put into effect under uh, former Governor Deval Patrick. And then these are coming down the pike, and I have received a notification from an agency called Massachusetts Union of Public Housing Tenants, and it has a little blurb in here about some of the new regulations that are going to be implemented. Um, one sentence is, says that every housing authority in Massachusetts is now mandated to have a resident seat on the Board of Commissioners that must be chosen by the residents who live there. So what we have now is Linda Jones has been voted in by the town. Um, well, the recent one was Mildred Gallioni, but I, I'd have to look and see when Linda's term is in, up as far as when that expires. It's my belief that this is going to take place while she still, um, you know, has not, her, her term has not been released. So this is a brand new thing. They talked about it in an organization called Mass Narrow last fall um, on how it's all going to work. And um, that's one of the things. There's a new regulation, including new rent regulation that's being drafted. So these are all changes. There's a workshop on October 14th that I will be going to, and that was given to me by Mass Public Housing. Um, so that's, I guess, got to be looked into on what the impact of that would be and when the, what the time frame of. Um, one other issue, and I believe I sent the email to all of you, had to do with some of us had to reach out to the town highway department about ice melt and sand. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the lay of the land is two front buildings, two rear buildings. The rear buildings did not receive any buckets with ice melt in it. The front two buildings are secure buildings. There's big buckets in the front of the doors once you get in the building, big buckets of ice melt in the back also. There wasn't any provision for the back two buildings. And we have staircases going up, ramps, a double staircase, and so forth. It was a major concern last winter, and it wasn't even a bad snowy winter, but it's something that's very dangerous for us. Um, and so um, we were told to you know, feel free, go get it, but we're talking about people that are impaired. Um, one impaired woman who no longer lives there was given an empty bucket and said, well, just go get it. Um, she can't lift it, even if she could go get it, and so, um, I'm concerned about that as well as a lot of other people. If we need to ask somebody to get us some empty buckets, you know, um, is that something that we could go to the town highway department and, and get, you know, one person was given an empty tidy cat litter thing. So I'm not clear on what to do other than if we have the same situation, it's just not, it's not good. I'm sure we can work, we'll definitely work with the Housing Authority and, and come up with, with okay. a solution to make sure that you have uh, a safe situation. There. Right, this, this because ice melt is in a big bucket in the community realm, mm -hmm. a little bit of it in a bucket there, but it doesn't go near the stairs, the steps, the ramp that's out back. and. Also, it was mentioned by the residents, we'd love it if we could have a barrel of sand or salt on the curve. Um, and so I'm hoping that that's going to happen. It might be something that um, we'd have to see if the town could assist us with that, because so it's slippery as you're trying to do the We absolutely will work with the, the house to make sure that, that you have this. Okay. Uh, and hopefully you won't need them. 
I know. Uh, uh, well, well, you, you know, we didn't the, get much uh, snow and ice, but it was bad. Uh, we had a few times. Them, you will have the ice melt and the, and the snow. Music. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. And then there are a few people that don't have an overhang or an eave. And in the past, I'm not one of those. I'm lucky to have a kind of a, you know, a breezeway as such that keeps the snow and ice off. But there are people on the ends of the buildings that don't have an overhang. And if we get enough snow, they're absolutely trapped in until someone can shovel them out. Mm -hmm. um, and in the past, I think a few people have called the fire department who've come over and helped. Um, you know, it's my understanding we have a 77-year-old man He's there part-time. He gets there when he can. He doesn't have help. Um, many of us do a lot of our own shoveling, and I'm still able to do that, and I'm 68, but other people are, are at the mercy of, of who shows up when. So um, um, I appreciate any help in that. Okay. And my last comment is, 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 maybe you can help me with this, is um, on the website, is the public aware that they can come to the housing authority meetings? It is a public meeting, and it just, I'm not sure. We don't ever get an agenda that's posted anywhere. We don't get any minutes that's posted anywhere. Um, and I'm pretty sure the agenda needs to be posted so we have some idea what's going to be discussed. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that. I can pursue it from another angle. Um, but I think it's just a matter of knowing the agenda, having it in advance. We're talking about people who don't have a computer, who can't look up something on a website and print it out for themselves. So in order to kind of know what's coming up, what's going to be talked about, and ensure that people can go to a meeting and have a say, you know, raise a hand and have a comment, I'm thankful that you do it in the uh, selectmen's time, because I know I wasn't on the agenda. Um, but we really need that kind of a situation. And, and again, for record, any posted public meeting uh, is open to the public. And, and the public is invited to come to any posted public meeting. The only time that the public is not allowed in a meeting is when that, that committee goes into an executive session accordingly. Okay. Um, we can work, and again, I will, you know, through the town manager and through, through our office, we'll work with the town clerk and to see, because normally when a meeting is posted and the gender is attached with that and, and, and it's usually on the on the uh, on the website right um, again we will, we will check I'm pretty on that sure it's sure. supposed to be posted you know like printed posted so people can see it um, it's my understanding and and there should be no and again this is yeah you know all I can all we can do is say you know we will try to communicate okay. with the individuals um, with respect on the housing authority to, to see if they can if, I, if they can do a paper copy post it on, on the bulletin board somewhere in, in the office so that'd be great we'll work with that i so. appreciate your time not a problem thank, thank you. you thank you any other comments seeing none i will poll the board uh with respect to going into executive session uh under mass general law chapter 30a Section 21, exception number three, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation, litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Aye. Brother Fleming, aye. Jim Brochu, aye. We are in executive session. Thank you all. <laughs>